The title of this lesson is Transient Response of First Order Circuits to Sinusoidal Inputs. Here we see a device connected, as you can see, to an AC power supply. It has an on-off switch. And if the device can be modeled as a first order circuit, either an RL or RC circuit, what can we predict analytically for the voltages and currents just after that switch is turned on? What about the time between T equals zero when the switch is turned on and the eventual AC steady state? Well, that's called the transient response. How long will the transient response last? What are the currents and voltages involved in the circuit during that time interval? Are they the same every time the switch is closed? Well, let's close the switch and then move to an analytical treatment relying, as always, on connections constraints, KVL and KCL, and the element current voltage constraints. So here would be a block diagram of the situation. We have a sinusoidal voltage source. It's connected to a, to a circuit and the switch closes. Let's call that T equals zero. And in this lesson, the rest of the circuit's either a first order RC or first order RL circuit. Let's work through the RC uh, case for the remainder of this lesson. In that case, we may show that an RC circuit consisting of a Thevenin resistor and a capacitor is connected to a voltage source of value V sub A times the quantity cosine omega T plus V, V being a phase angle, all multiplied by the step function U of T. Now, the step function is zero for T less than zero, and it's equal to one for T greater than zero. For a typical North American uh, AC 120 volt RMS circuit then, V sub A, the peak amplitude would be about 169.7 volts. Uh, omega, the angular frequency is two pi times 60 radians per second. And phi will be somewhere between plus and minus pi radians, depending on exactly where the closing switch catches the AC waveform. Well, let's start by solving for the capacitor voltage, which is the state variable. And once we've got that, then we can solve for any other currents or voltages of interest as well. Now, for efficiency, I'd like to draw from an earlier lesson titled, quote, a general approach to solving first order RL and RC circuits, unquote to remind us of the solution for state variables, inductor currents or capacitor voltages, denoted here as Y of T. Uh, in our case, it's the capacitor voltage. Y of zero is the initial value of the capacitor voltage, if any. The function X is the voltage source in the circuit, and that is to say the sinusoidal AC voltage source. The quantity TC is the time constant. In this case, it's the product RC. And Z is a variable of integration we've expressed x as VA times cosine omega t plus phi. Yeah. Let's put that expression into the integral and focus for now on the y sub x term. The first simplicity, we take phi equal to zero, and we'll relax that assumption later in the lesson. But in that case, the expression for the y sub x part of the state variable response can now be written as shown in the bottom line of this slide. We're integrating the product of an exponential function and a cosine function. In this slide, and the next one too, I'd like to show a mathematical pathway to the final expression for the capacitor voltage. You know, there's nothing magic involved here. It's a matter of patiently inserting the appropriate variables and manipulating the results. If you're interested in details, you might want to pause the video and take notes. Or if you just want to get to the bottom line expression, let's move along. Uh, this shows some of the intermediate steps involved in the actual integration. Again, I'm not going to read them out, but if you pause the video to examine them more closely, that would be fine. In any case, we end up here with what might be considered an intermediate result for y of x at the bottom of this slide. The expression has all the right variables, omega, t sub c, v sub a. But with that combination of a cosine term, a sine term, and an exponential term, it doesn't exactly readily lend itself to a picture in one's mind. So let's use some trig identities to simplify this a little farther. At the bottom of this slide, we've arrived at a nice expression that consists of the sum of two terms. First is a transient term. That will vanish as time increases. It goes as an exponential to minus t over t sub c. That second term, though, is sinusoidal in nature. It's expressed here as a cosine omega t plus phase angle. 
And that can tur turn continues on with time. But wait, there was also one other thing that I haven't included in here. Y sub x was only part of the state variable response. There was also a term depending on the initial condition. And adding that term to what we already have, we arrive at this final expression for the capacitor voltage. There's a transient term that will fade away exponentially after the switch is closed at t equals zero. And a second term that continues on, it's that second term that is called the AC steady state capacitor voltage. And that has the same frequency as the driving voltage source, but it's shifted in phase by theta, which is equal to the inverse tangent of minus omega times RC. This sketch is an example of a resulting capacitor voltage versus time for a first order RC circuit in a sinusoidal waveform. At the beginning of the lesson, we wondered, well, what does that transient part look like? How long does it last? We see that it's the product of a sinusoidal and an exponential term, and it lasts several time constants. We also wondered if the currents and voltages in the circuit would be the same every time we turn the switch on. Well, let's use SPICE to answer that second question. In the SPICE file, we'll consider some different values of phi, i.e. exactly where the switch catches the AC voltage when it's closed, and also the issue of initial conditions. First consider the case of R equals 10 ohms, C equals 1,000 microfarads, and let's say the switch just happens to close at a time such that the applied voltage is a pure cosine wave, in other words, phi equals zero. And we've taken the initial capacitor voltage in this simulation to be zero as well. The SPICE result shows the applied AC voltage in blue and the resulting voltage across the capacitor is shown in red. Note there's a voltage division between the resistor and capacitor, and capacitor voltage is shifted by about 75 degrees relative to the applied voltage. Let's look more closely at the capacitor voltage for this case. The steady state response is a sinusoid with a peak voltage of about 43 volts. That's reached just a few cycles after the switch is closed. The time constant for the circuit is 10 milliseconds. And during the transient period, the largest voltage experienced by the capacitor absolute magnitude-wise is about 46 volts. Next, change one thing. Suppose that I happen to close that switch when the phi associated with the AC wave is minus 90 degrees. Again, the capacitor voltage ends up at the same steady state value after a few cycles, but now during that transient, the capacitor experiences up to 62 volts during the transient phase. But what if the capacitor had an initial voltage? Suppose the switch had been turned off and then really quickly turned back on again before the capacitor had time to significantly discharge. Specifically, let's look at the case where the capacitor voltage was 43 volts. The switch was closed at a time corresponding to phi equal minus 90 degrees on the AC waveform. Here's the result. Again, the same AC response in steady state is reached after a few wave cycles, but now the capacitor experiences up to 83 volts during the transient phase. We could also ask SPICE to show us the capacitor current during the same time interval. Rounding off a bit, the AC steady current settles down to a 16 amp sinusoidal current, but during the transient phase we see up to a 19 amps absolute value. So when specifying component values for AC circuits, you can see that certainly the transient phase can be an important part of things. In fact, it may be the most stressful time for the circuit in that sense. Well, yes, let's look back at the lesson now and draw some summary comments. First, we found that the analytic solution of a first order circuit connected to an AC source by a switch is the sum of a transient portion and a steady state AC portion. The transient portion consists of the product of the sinusoidal term and an exponential term and it dies away after a few time constants, either R times C or L over R, depending on the circuit. Secondly, we've seen that the exact details of that transient response depends on where in the AC cycle the switch is activated. So there's some randomness to that, because generally when we push or toggle the switch, we don't know exactly where the source is in the alternating cycle. The transient response will also depend on initial conditions for the reactive element, either the capacitor voltage or inductor current, if there is any. And thirdly, even though the transient portion of the response is ephemeral, disappearing after just a few time constants, in some cases it's during that transient portion that the maximum voltages and currents are experienced by the circuit. So it's definitely something that a circuit designer and analyst wants to be cognizant of. 
Well, this concludes this lesson. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope that it has been of some use to you.